procs out. So in the last class, we were discussing about a proxort. proxort. Can somebody tell me what is the use of proxort processor? Why we use the proxort processor? To rearrange the data. To rearrange observations based of on that. the bivariable value. Based on the bivariable value. OK. Now. What is the process that we write? Proxot data is equal to data set name by variable semicolon run. Now, if I execute this program, what will happen? It will sort the whatever the data set that you specified here. It will sort the data set. But where will you get the sorted data? Work label. No, I'm asking. I'm asking in which data set you will get. Data. In the same data set. In the same data set, it will, uh, it will override the old data with the rearranged data. But if you want to have a sorted data in a different data set, what is the what is the option you should write? Out is. Now we should write out is equal to option. Out is equal to data set name. Say if I say say for example proc sort sas help dot class out is equal to say for example class one. Now tell me what will happen now? It will create a new data set. Now the sorted data will come into yeah. So you can specify by a variable. Whatever the variable that is specified here. If I specify here, say for example, a character variable, how the data will be get sorted? After females, after the names. So the data will get sorted from A to Z. The data will be get sorted from A to Z. But if you specify a numerical variable, how the data will be get sorted? Ascending order. Mm -hmm. So lowest, lowest value, value to the highest value. The second value. But if you specify two variables here, then what will happen now? Sex variable, first females, yes. and after males, then. So first, the data will be get sorted by sex. Within the sex, the data will be get sorted by age. Now you can specify multiple variables. Sir. Now, how many specific variables that you specify? So the the out left most variable will set will sort by hundred percent. Now within that next variable fifty percent. Within that next variable, you know twenty five percent and so on and so on. But if you want to sort the data by descending order, you specify the descending variable name. If I specify descending sex, then what will happen? Now we'll get the males first, then female. Now, if I specify descending sex, then age, then what will happen now? Age ascending order. So sex is going to be in descending order, but age is going to be age is going to be in ascending order. Okay. But now tell me what is going to happen if I specify sex and a descending age. Sex going to be ascending order. Age going to be descending index is equal to double S E M. Shiva Krishna. Now, if I specify descending sex and a descending is, what will happen now? Both two variables are arranged in descending order. First, sex is going to go up a descending order. Now, within the sex, age is going to be in descending order. Okay. And then, if I specify by underscore underscore by underscore care underscore, then what how it is going to get sorted now? Numerical data will sorted by lowest value to highest value. It is going to sort only character yeah. data. Name, name, name and sex. 
sampath when you switch when you unmute your mic i'm getting a lot of background noise from your side okay please sir. cooperate with us then i'm writing by underscore numeric underscore you know if i specify underscore numeric underscore the data will be get sorted away all the numerical variables the first is a age variable then within that is a height variable within the height then the weight variable now if i specify by underscore all underscore now the data is going to get sorted away all the variables the leftmost variable is name within the name sex now within the sex age within the age height and within that height now it will get sorted away this is how the data is going to get sorted now i told you proc sort processor not only for the sorting we also use a proc sort processor for other purpose what is that second important the most important purpose so we use proc sort processor to remove the duplicate observations now i'm writing proc sort data is equal to sas self dot class now keep it out is equal to class 2 now i'm writing say for example by sex now if i execute this program generally data will be get sorted by age but uh, if i want to remove the duplicate observations i'm going to use an option called no dupe key no dupe key will treat an observation is in a duplicate observation based on the by variable value since in the by statement we have a sex variable in the sex variable if we have the same value for the second time now the no dupe key will treat it as a duplicate the first time will be unique from the second time onwards it will be duplicate so since high specified by sex in the sex we have female nine times first time is going to be unique and remaining eight times are going to be duplicates now see if i execute this program in the class two data set how many observations will you get anybody how many observations will you get in the class two i'll get only two, two observations two one from two female and one from male but uh, i want to collect all the deleted observations in one data set if you want to click collected all the deleted observations in one data set now we are going to write an option called dupe out is equal to data set name now tell me if i specify by age then how many originals and how many duplicates you will have six six originals are remaining 13 are going to be duplicate because we have six age groups okay. but when we have a first time it is going to be original remaining when you have the same for the second time then it is going to be duplicate understand this one okay and after that yes, now tell me what is going to happen if i specify by sex and age when i specify no do key in the by statement if i specify two variables then what will happen which way which observation how both common then it treat as if sex and age if sex and age coming duplicate for the second time at the same time in the same observation we have sex and age values are same for the second time then only the observation will be treated as an a duplicate observation that means both sex and age should be same in the next observation in the second observation then it will be treated as an a duplicate observation understand this one and then later we started discussing about the next important option which is you know no dupe we can also specify you know no duplicate and we can also specify no no dupe rec what this no dupe rec to it will all these three are same it will treat an observation as a duplicate when the entire observation is a duplicate and not only that one both the observation should be one after the other then only it will treat it as a duplicate observation understand this concept yesterday we have discussed about this one everybody Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, I told you in the last class, sir, what is the default duplicating? Oh, sorry, du default sorting order? Ascending order. Ascending order. What yeah. method based on based on what method we are going to do that one? We do that one based on the ASCII key method. You know what you mean by ASCII key? American Standard Code for Information Interchange. This is the method that we follow, right? You know. By default, what we are going to have, we are going to have proc sort data is equal to sas help dot class 
out is equal to i want to have a class one data set now i'm writing by name so by default we are going to have an a state an option called sort sequence sort to see sorry by default we are going to have an option called sort sequence and by default we are going to have like this one ash key so this is the american standard code for information interchange this is what we follow okay as uh, according to ash key i told you we are going to have few special characters then zero to nine then few special characters capital a to capital z then we are going to have few special characters then we are going to have you know small a to small z that means uh, if i have a data like this one i'm having say for example you know naresh i'm having say for example you know capital capital naresh and then we have say for example you know two naresh and then i have say for example naresh now if i sort this data can you tell me which is going to come first Numeric will come. Two numeric will come first. This is going to be this is going to be the first one, and this will be the second one, second. and this will be the third, third one, and this will be the fourth one. Because I told you, according to Ashiki order, highest priority for mm -hmm. zero to nine, then the next highest priority for capital A to capital Z, and the next priority for small a to small z. So numerical will come first, then upper cases. Then we are going to have, you know, proper case, and finally in the last we are going to have a lower case. Why? Because because we are following ASCII key order. All our keyboards works according to this ASCII order only. Quality keyboards. Now, apart from the sort sequence ASCII key, what we can write? We can write different types of, you know, what you call it, different types of sequences that are available you know if you are working on a european project or some other project in the specific end they clearly mention you and please use you know ebc dic order ebcd embedded binary coded decimal interchange code and you know denmark is going to have own sorting sequence we call it as in a danish so if you want to use the danish if you are working on a denmark project then the sponsor will tell you please don't use ashk and use a danish and we are going to write in the scenario, you know, Danish. This is how we are going to write it. And if you are working on a Finland project, you have to write a Finnish. And if you are working on an Italian project, you should write Italian. So certain countries have their own sequencing order. You should use that sequence. So, so Poland is going to have a Polish. Spanish, Swedish, national, and these are the some of the sorting sequences that we have. But when they want to have, they clearly mention you, and according to that, you have to use it. Understand this one? After the sort sequence, yes, the sir. next option that we are going to have is sort size. The next option that we are going to have in a sort size. What is this sort size? Say, for example, you know, I need to perform a report. I need to submit a report one week back. But because I was like an out of office, I couldn't be able to do the report. Now, today, I have to submit at any cost. So to generate the report, first of all, I need to sort the data as part of my programming. I told you in the SAS program, if you are writing anywhere by statement, if you are specifying that uh, a variable in the by statement, what is the prerequisite? The data should be in sorted order. In a sorting order. You have to sort it. Your program is a by statement or before the by statement, what is the prerequisite? The data should be in sorting order based on the by variable. So sorting is a very common procedure that we use every day. We are going to, you know, whenever you want to merge, whenever you want to interleave, whenever you want to write first data variable, whenever you want to write like, you know, anything, you have to write the by statement. And by statement variable last time. If you want to write a variable in the by statement, in order to write that variable in the by statement, you have to sort the data before that. So sorting is a, such a basic, very important, you know, very necessary procedure. Now, you know, to do report in today, I have to sort my data should be in a sorting order. Now, 
I didn't do that, that one last time. Now I want to sort the data. I'm writing proc sort. Data is equal to, you know, SAS help dot shoes. Now out is equal to, I'm writing a data set called shoes. Just imagine this data set contains 10 million observations. If I execute this program, it is going to take two hours to get sorted. It will take minimum two hours to get sorted. If it takes only two hours for sorting, then when should I write a program for the report? And when should I submit my report? Understand? Now I want to do this sorting very quickly. I do not want to do anything other than the sorting. Now I want to allocate all my system resources for sorting only. You know, when you're when you're doing in one way, in one window, you are going to write a program. In another window, you are going to open Excel sheet. In another window, you are going to open reference code. And you do so many things, you know, multitasking. And when you're doing that one, what system will do? System will allocate certain memory space or certain, you know, RAM space for each task. Now, what I want to do, I want to stop all other tasks and I want to perform only sorting. I want to allocate all my system RAM for sorting purpose only. If you want to do that one, now we are going to use an option called sort size. Now, how we are going to write now, we are going to have an option called sort size is equal to. By default, we are going to have an it two. You know, by the way, what do you, what do you mean by two? Two means two MB. That means in our RAM, two MB will be get dedicated only for the sorting. So now the sorting will take place with that pace. But now I do not want to do anything because I want to do as quickly as possible for this sorting. If you want to do that one, now change that sort size is equal to 2 MB. I want to allocate all my RAM only for sorting. Then you should write sort size is equal to max. That means now all my RAM memory will be get allocated for only sorting. But out of, say for example, I have an 8 GB RAM. Out of 8 GB, I want to allocate 2 GB only for sorting. Now, sort size is equal to, you are going to specify 2 GB. So now, the sorting will take space in the pace of 2 GB. Understand? Now, I have so much of time. I want to do the sorting now, but uh, I have overnight time. Tomorrow By tomorrow morning, I want to have a sorted data set. So that I have enough time now I want to do it very slow. I want to do it very slow. So now I'm going to give only say for example, you know, 100 KB. Now I'm going to write specify 100 KB. So now the sorting will take place very, very slow because by tomorrow morning, I want to get ready by my data sets. So now whatever the size that you want to allocate for sorting, now we can specify by using sort size is equal to. If you want to have a 200 MB, I'll specify 200 MB like this one. But what is the default that we have? Sort size is equal to 2. 2 means 2 MB. Understand this one? Everybody clear with this? Okay, now. Next one is. I am writing proc sort. Data is equal to SAS help dot hot. Okay. So I am writing out is equal to hot data set. By I am writing, say, for example, you know, is at depth. This is the variable I am using. Okay. Now tell me if I execute this program, what is the new data set I will get now? Hot. Where I will get this data set? In which library it will be get saved? Work library. Okay, very good. Now, you know, I have a SAS help dot hot data set in the help library. And this size of the D status is, say, for example, just 10 GB. So, hot in a data set size of 10 GB. Now, what is the size of hot? Am I removing any duplicate observations here? No. So, so that okay. means heart is also equal to. Sad, 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 s
So now this is also going to be 10 GB. Now, but where this SAP will get saved? In the work library, because I'm writing out is equal to heart, right? But just imagine in the work library, I have only 5 GB memory, 5 GB space. Now, they can put a work library low, 5 GB space. Now, what is going to happen? Now, the sorting processor will come to halt. It is going to, it going to be get faulted. Now, whenever you have a enough space next time, then the proc sort processor will get resume. So, since you do not have a enough length, sorry, enough memory or enough space in your designated library, now the sorting processor will come to halt. When we have a enough space next time, then the program will be get resumed. Just think about the scenario. Since you do not have the space, you know, proc sort processor is going to take all the data into backend. Since you do not have a space, now it is going to get fog. So since it has been paused, all this data will be get present in the back end. So there's going to be so much of burden on SAS. Because it is going to carry that 10, 10 million observations in the back end until you have enough space. So in this scenario, I want to ease this, the burden on the SAS. To ease the burden, now we are going to use an option called, you know, tag sort. What is this tag sort option can do? When we have a space issues in SAS server or a CPU, now, what this what this tag sorts can do? Tag sort, say for example, you know, I will show you SAS dot class SAS dot hard data set. Okay, this one. What tag sort do you know? Tag sort is going to discard the entire observation. But can you tell me what is the variable that we have in the by statement? What is the variable that we have in the by statement? AZ AZ. AZ. So it is it is going to keep only AZ depth variable in the back end and is going to discard all the variables. Then after that, what it will do to that AZ depth variable? You know what it will do? It is going to create a tag for each value. Say, for example, here I have 5,209 observations. Just imagine for all the 5,209 observations, for each observation, it will create a tag. Remember, you know, when you give it a close in dry cleaning shop, how they are going to understand that those clothes are reverse only? How they are going to identify? They are going to they're going to keep a tag to your clothes, right? Whatever that like in a suit or like in a blazer, whatever you have given, they're going to add a tag to that one. So that is how they are going to recognize that so-and-so clothes are yours, right? In the same way, this tag sort option will create a tag to the value of the by variable. Now it is going to discard all the other variables. Now, when we have an enough space next time, now by using these tags, now the sorting processor is going to sort very fast. Understand this one? That is how the tag sorts are going to help us. So we use these tag sorts when we have an M space issues. And this tag sort option in the proxy statement is useful when you know, there may not be enough disk space to, to, you know, to sort a large SAS data set. When you specify the tag sort option, it don't, you know, it only keep that by variable value. And it is going to discard all the other values. And uh, it is going to add a tag. And that tag is called as a key. Now, when we have an enough space, now by using those tags or keys, now the sorting process is going to take very faster. And then the data is going to be is going to be get sorted and for that purpose we are going to use a tag sort option clear everybody sorry the sorry but jada okay say for example if i execute this program there is a chance of creating a hard data set in the work library just imagine hard data set size is 10 mg 10 gb but I do not have enough space right now in the work library because it is going to get created in the work library. 
just imagine i have only 5g 5 gb space in the work library but if this program got executed i will get a hard reset it will take 10 gb so i am not having enough space but i executed this program then what is going to happen so since you do not have an enough space so say for example see we want to copy a movie in in our pen drive and a movie is in a 4k 4 you know 4k quality and it will take you know 5 gb space but in the pen drive you you have only 2 gb what will happen as soon as you started you know copying that one you will get an a warning you do not have an enough space in our disk isn't it in the same way since you do not have an enough space in the work library now the proc start is will become you know will come to pause so okay it has become in pause then what is going to happen in the back end it is going to have all the load all the 10 million observations in the back end so if it is carrying all the 10 million observations it is going to be burden for sas right so to avoid that one if you specify the tag sort option what it will do whichever variable you specify in the by statement to that variable value it attach a tag like how we are going to have you know attach a tags to it in a close in a direct link shop in the same way it is going to add a tags to each value of only age at a death variable and those are called sorting keys those tags are called sorting keys now when we have an enough space and it is going to remove all the other variables you know in the our data set we have 16 variables so it will remove all the 15 variables so in the back end it is going to keep only those sorting keys now when we have enough space for the next time whenever we have any whenever we got to that required space so then now by using the sorting keys so now the data will be get sorted and you will get eventually the final data set sorted data set so to ease the burden on sas when we have any space issues we use tag sort option understand this one yes sir thank you and by the way this is proc sort processor everybody clear with this one a space vachina put automatic data set full vachesa sir automatic execute ayipothundi kaani a back end lo adi adi fault lo unnanta sepu to avoid the burden on sas we are going to use tag sort option okay thank you sir clear everyone can i go to the next topic okay so this is about a proc sort and we have done with the proc sort the next the very important processor we are going to discuss in today's class this one very very important it looks very simple but will uh, me this is a very very important processor now see i'm creating a data set data ds1 input id name character variable dollar symbol age sex character variable dollar symbol then i'm writing the salary i'm writing data lines 101 name abc age 23 gender male salary 5000 102 def 29 male 7000 103 klm 21 female 6000 104 xyz 28 female 8000 and finally 105 dqw 31 male 9000 and i will let one more 106 w PO, it is a 29 female 8500. Now, this is my data. I want to create data set. Now, tell me if I execute this program, how many variables and how many observations I'm going to have in the data set? I will have five variables and six, six observations. observations. Okay. Now, focus on this data set, on this raw data. You you, you kept your hand on this data set. Okay. You put your hand on this data set. And in the clockwise direction, 
you know you tilted you turned this data set to 50, you know 20 or uh, we can say like you know with 45 degrees angle so you put your hand on this data set just in the right hand on the data set and you turn this data set or you rotated this data set into 45 degrees angles right side in clockwise direction then what will happen understand my point what i'm saying just i put on my hand on this data set in the clockwise direction i rotated this data set to 45 degrees then what is the situation now observations becomes variable sir understand everybody what i'm asking first of all Also will become columns and columns will become. So in SAS, so there are going to be n number of scenarios so where we need to convert our variables into observations, variables of a data set into observations, and observations of a data set into variables. Now, if you want to convert variables into observations and observations into variables, so now we are going to use a processor called PROC transpose. Very, very important processor. So PROC transpose is useful to convert variables into observations. Observations and observations into observations into variables. There are going to be so many scenarios there. We need to convert variables into observations and observations into variables. Now. This is the data set I'm having in the work library. We have a DS1 data set. Now, can you see we have five variables and six observations. Now I am writing a program like this one. I want to transpose. I want to convert variables into observations and observations into variables. Now I'm writing a program like this one. Proc transpose. Data is equal to which data set you want to transpose. What is the data set I'm having now? DS1. I want to transpose the DS1. Now keep a semicolon. Now write the run statement. You know what will happen? By default, PROC transpose will transpose only numerical variables. Now can you tell me in this data set what are the numerical variables I'm having? What are the numerical ID, values that we have? ID, age, age and age. salary. Now only those three variables will be get transposed. You know what is going to happen now? ID is a variable, right? In the TS1, now it will become an observation. Now, you know, we have 101, 102, 3, 4, 5 vertically. Now it will become horizontal like this one. 101, then we are going to have 102, then we are going to have 103, then 104, now 105, and then we will have a 106. Now, can you see we used to have in a vertical dimension, now it is in a horizontal dimension. After the transposition, this is the situation. Now, what is the second variable, numerical variable that we have in the data set DS1? Age variable. Age variable. Now, now it is going to become 23. Then it is going to become 29. Then you know what? Then we are going to have a 21. Then we are going to have a 28. Then we are going to have an A31. And finally, what we are going to have now? We are going to have 29. Now we used to have A's in a vertical dimension. Now it has become a horizontal dimension. Now, in the same way, the third variable is a salary is a numerical variable. Now you know what is going to happen? Now we are going to have a 5k. I'm not writing all the values. It is going to be 5000 like this one. If you want, I can write, you know, this is how we are going to have 5000. And then, then what we are going to have now? Then after that, we are going to have in a seven thousand. And then after that, what we are going to have now? What is the next value that we are going to have now? The next value that we are going to have in a six thousand. Oh. Then and after that, what we are going to have now? This is how it is going to be. And then we are going to have an eight thousand. Now we are going to have you know nine thousand. And finally, then we are going to have, you know, 8,500. 
so by default proc transpose processor will transpose only numerical variables so all the numerical variables are going to become observations now can you tell me after the transposition now how many variables i have in the data set in the transposed data set how many variables i have now we have six yeah. we used to have a six observations now those six observations has become six variable now by the way which variables has been transposed id is salary. now this is id it was in a variable now it has become an observation and this is a salary and this is so three variables has become three observations six observations has become now six variable and it looks fantastic but uh, what is the variable name it that you will get and these three are observations right now what are the variable name that you will get now when you transfer the data set by default we are going to get the variable name like this one this is going to become column one and then then this is going to become column two so by default we are going to have a column three third one then we are going to have a column four then we are going to have a column five then what you will get now we are going to have a column six so when you transpose a data set as i said the variables are going to become observations and observations are going to become variables that is okay then what are the variable names that you will get so since the six observations has become six variables now we are going to get the column names variable names from call one to call six now which variables we have transposed by the way what are the variables that has been transposed numerical variables id, numerical id. id and salary id is and salary so now whichever variable that has been transposed now those variables will come into a variable called underscore name underscore so that means in underscore name underscore we are going to have variable called id now okay we are going to have an id then the second variable that we are going to have what is this variable it is an age variable and in underscore name underscore what is the third value that we are going to have we are going to have salary because the third value is the salary which has been transposed now this is the transposed data set situation this is how we are going to have the data in the transposed data set understand this one now see i am selecting this program to show it to i am executing this program by the way i am getting proc transpose data is equal to ds1 right in the ds1 you know that we have five variables and six six observations now once the transposition taken place where this data will be get you know dumped in which data you are going to get the data did i specify any data set name no no sir i specified only the data set that what i want to get transposed but where should i get the transpose data? since i didn't specify any data set name by default proc transpose it doesn't have that output that's why if i execute this program you know what proc transpose will do it will create its own data set and in that we'll get the transpose data so if i execute this program by default we are going to have a new data set called data one if i execute the same program again one more time it will create data two again if i execute this program data so every time when i execute the program now i will get the data into a new data set called data 1 to data n now i'll open this one now can you see this is how we are going this is what we have discussed and this is what we have got both are is going to be the same can you see this one so now we have two types of variables here underscore name underscore call 1 to call 6 you know this number depends upon how many observations that we have those many variables will be get created and as i said by default which variables has been transposed only yeah. the numerical variables understand this one now by the way what is the new data set i'm getting here data one data two data three if i execute the same program again this time i'm going to have a data four but i do not want to have a data set like this one i want to have all this transposed data in my own data set if you want to have a transposed data in your own data set now we should write an option called out is equal to whatever the data set number that you specified here now the transposed data will come into that data set now it will not create data five or data six or something now select this program and execute it 
Now, can you say now we have a transposed data in a data set called temp? Now, from now onwards, now the data will come into temp data set. And now, see here we are going to have the same data. Understand this one? Now, by the way, I want to transfer a specific variable. By default, it's transposing all the numerical variables, but I want to transpose only salary. So if you want to transpose a specific variable, now we are going to get a new statement called var statement. Var statement specifies the variable that you want to transpose. Which variable I want to transpose? I want to transpose only salary. Now var cell. Keep a semicolon. Now select the program and execute it. Now we are going to have transposed. We are going to get transfer only the salary will now see if I go to the temp data set now can you see what we have now we have only salary and by the way I want to transpose all the five variables I want to transfer both character and numerical now if you want to do that one what I should do now I'm going to specify proc transpose data is equal to say for example ds1 out is equal to I want to have a temp one and by the way, I want to transpose all the variables. So where I want to transpose ID, then name, then age, then sex, then salary, semicolon run. Now it will transpose all the five variables of the data set. Now the five variables will become five observations. And since we have six observations, six of them will become six variables. Now we have a call one. There we have ID, name, age, sex value, and salary value. And then we have a call to call three call four and call five column five and column six and then yes we transfer five variables in underscore name underscore we get all the five variables now i want to transfer only name and sex if you want to transfer only name sex and what i should do i am writing proc transpose Data is equal to I am writing say for example ds1 out is equal to I am writing a temp2 and uh, by the way I want to transfer only name and sex so now it will transfer only two variables. Understand this one now I'm going back to my data set to my again you know while I'm creating this data set I had given the labels for few variables so now for ID variable. I'm giving the label ID is equal to I'm letting say for example, you know employee ID. And the second variable is a name. I want to apply the label name is equal to say for example, I'm writing employee name. And the third variable is age variable is equal to I'm writing say for example, employee is and the fourth variable sex variable is equal to I'm writing say for example, employee gender. And then finally, the last variable salary is equal to I want to have, you know, employee salary. Now that means uh, I had given the labels from all my five variables by the way. And I want to transpose all the five variables. If you want to transpose all the five variables, what you should do, you should write a proc transpose. Data is equal to DS1. Out is equal to I want to have a temp2. And uh, and which ones I want to transpose? ID, name, age, sex, salary semicolon, then run. Now where I'm getting where I'm going to get all the transposed data in temp2 data set. Now I'm selecting this program. Now can you tell me how many variables and how many observations I'm going to have in the temp2? How many variables and how many observations I will have in the temp2? It's variable and five six variables and Five observations. Five seven variables. Why seven? You mean underscore, underscore name, underscore ten. also? That is okay. Yes. So now, so five variables will become five observations, and six observations will become six variables, right? And apart from that, now see if I execute the program, this is the situation in the temp2 data set. Now, very very important interview question: What are the automatic variables that you will get? when you run proc transfer procedure what are the variables that you will get automatically 
But can you see what are the variables that we have? Underscore name, underscore, underscore, name, underscore, 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 name, underscore, underscore, name, underscore, contains the variable that we transposed. Then we have underscore label underscore, which contains the transposed variable label. And then we are going to have call one to call six because we used to have a six observations. So now those are those are become six variables. So when you write a proc transpose procedure, what are the automatic variables that you will get? This is the very important question that you are going to get. And you would say, I will get underscore name underscore underscore label underscore and call one to call n. If you do not have a label, you won't get the underscore label underscore, but uh, you're going to have underscore name underscore and call one to call n. Now tell me, think logically, if I write a proc transpose, okay, data is equal to, I'm going to specify sas help dot class. And then I'm writing out is equal to say, for example, demo one. Then tell me what is going to happen. What will happen if I go to this program? All 19 observations are going. 19 variables. 19 variables. Okay. Five observations. observations. No, sir. We get to numerical observations, sir. By default, it will transpose only numerical observations. Yeah, that yeah, means yeah. numerical variables. So that means A is height and variable will get transposed. So those three variables will become three observations. And since we have a 19 observations, so now it will become call one to call 19. Call 19. And apart from that, what we are going to get now, we are going to have underscore name. Good name, name underscore. underscore. Isn't it? Now see, select the program and execute it. Now we have a demo one. This is what happened. Now we have from call one to call 19. And then along with that, we have underscore name, underscore. Where, where we have three variables because by default, it transposes only numerical variables. But if you want to transpose all the five variables, what I should do? What we should Where? do? Where? First, first name, sex, age, height, height, and then wait a second for that. Now select the program and execute it. Now all the five variables will be transposed. So five variables will become five observations and 19 observations will become 19 variables from call one to call 19. Clear this one? And I'm going to stop this one for here today. We'll continue in tomorrow's class. Okay? So no transpose, it looks very simple, but it's a very, very important one. Okay. Okay, sure. I'll send the notes. Okay. Thank you, sir. See you tomorrow. Thank you, sir.